Hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on a couple of wooden motor cruisers in or around Victoria, British Columbia, this being one of them, uh, along with the loving memory of my pup Jordy, all the while fixing both of them up for some pretty ambitious cruising someday. If that's the sort of thing that you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. I'd love to have you. Brilliant week uh, working on MV Poem. Starting to put uh, some of the um, veneer, mahogany veneer, back into the aft cabin and start to get it to really feel like the space that I imagine for it. Anyway, let's jump back in time and you'll see exactly what it is I'm talking about. As always, I'd like to send a huge thanks out to my supporters on PayPal and Patreon. As you all know, uh, it's you folk that keep the show going. Thanks so much. Let's get to work. And welcome back to MV Poem. I'm so excited about this week because this is the week I get to transform the aft cabin from, well, a, a, not a bad space to a space that I believe will start to become actually something pretty cozy. And to do that, well, I'm going to um, refinish all the inside mahogany, very much like I did in the wheel wheelhouse. Uh, so that's not stripping it down. It's just a light sanding and then some of that gel stain. Um, I am going to panel uh, the bulkheads, both the forward bulkhead and the aft bulkhead in Sapili plywood and some nicely um, executed trim for that and I think that will come out really well and along this hull here which is beside the um, the bed I'm going to put in some more uh, paneled uh, ceiling material which is basically the same white um, uh, v-joint uh, beadboard that I put in up there uh, because that's going to be visible everywhere else here in the aft cabin the inside of the hull will be covered with cabinetry or something like that anyway let's get to work okay before I can carry on and do any of this bulkhead work I have to finish this door frame and I did get started on it last week so let's first jump back in time and get these edges nice and flush and then we can pick up where we are here this bulkhead is a mess this one isn't actually much better so what they really really need is some stoop mahogany um door frame now of course there'll never be a door here but let's just call it an opening frame and that will hold this all together and better yet somehow connect the bottom of this maybe with this nice stout um beam that i'm using for the sole here and i'm not quite sure how yet but that'll come in time the main thing to do right off the bat is to cut these back because if you look up here you can see that the new bracket and the new opening uh, implies an opening basically flush with that so my frame is going to sit here which means this is way too long so it's got to be cut back at least to there and then beyond whatever I'm going to leave as full structure for the opening so I think I'm going to make my door frame about an inch and a quarter um, I'm going to leave a half inch dado in it for the end of the bulkhead, leaving me three quarters of an inch of solid, beefy door frame. This is a bit savage. I won't be able to get to the end. I'll finish that up with the fine tool. It, the, the whole thing is just a bit, it's just a bit, yeah, it's just a bit, yeah. Okay, actually that turned out to be pretty tidy. Pretty darn tidy, actually. All right then, well that's pretty straightforward. So now I have a nice parallel flush opening that I can put a jam on, but before a jam, I need a sill. And the sill is a bit awkward because I'm gonna to have to cut out some more of the bulkhead here and how it's gonna sit against the sole and how it's going to tie in here because well this engine covery thing here is kind of in the way of the door which comes all the way to here in fact the engine is a little bit too but i'm going to be fine it all just fits and um i'll just integrate it all together uh but it is a bit tight there's no doubt about it okay start with a sill which is going to be a nice big chunky piece of uh Cipelli mahogany that's going to be able to slide down into place and uh then the two side jams will sit on top of that.
Now this particular piece of wood has a tremendous amount of figuring in it. In other words, it's not very straight grained. So in fact, it's almost useless for many, many things. It's okay for this door frame because it doesn't have to be particularly structural. I mean, it's not weak, it's just um, not ideal. Anyway, it might look actually quite pretty with all that figuring in it. All right, so to combat some of this structural vulnerability here, I've um, made a couple little structural pieces that will weave their way in here. This will replace the little bit of beadboard that was missing there, but allow me to create some structure. And this will come across, uh, sorry, this way, uh, right here, and uh, tie these two together. Actually, I was able to screw this piece in from the edge However, the bottom screw does require putting it in all the way with an offset screwdriver. But anyway, this should be quite secure now. All right, now this obviously is going to need finish, uh, my classic tongue oil, but it's also gonna be abused so much in the next little while, I'm not gonna oil it for a bit. And there's another reason, because I'm yet to fasten on these side jam things, which are gonna be screwed here with really long screws into the vertical um, part of the um, of the V-joint uh, bulkhead. Uh, so I want really long stainless screws and I don't have any right now, so that'll have to wait till next time. Okay, onward. morning well time to start paneling these walls um, now this one's actually against an exterior bulkhead so I'll test fit the panel I put in and remove it and I will varnish the back side of that um, because of the possibility of humidity coming through here but before I can do that this exhaust pipe um, has been driving me nuts ever since I opened up the boat it is uh, way, way, way too low. In fact, this is only just about at waterline. So I'm gonna move it up and over, which for starters will make it a little more compact and also create uh, some continuous drain as I'm going to lift the muffler as well at this end. Anyway, um, I cannot find my hole saws. They're completely missing. So I'm gonna have to cut this out with a jigsaw and a fine tool. It's not gonna be pretty. I'm not even sure I'm gonna show you. slightly more tapered than I thought. Well, I can deal with that. Okay, but first I want to uh, get a rough idea of this curve. So I'm just going to do a very rough start scribe. And then from there, I will do a more accurate one once I get closer. And I have to take it just a hair off 
from here up. Okay, there we go. Now I can do more refined scribe. Now I'm going to make this cut on the table saw because it's a down cut and it'll make a much cleaner edge on the finished surface. Alright then. Well, that's good enough for me, especially inside uh, the wardrobe. Okay, so I'm only going to tack this here for now uh, because as I mentioned, I am going to uh, take these back off and Varnish the back sides. Okay, let's carry on on this side. And there we go. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Moving on to the forward bulkhead, uh, which in many ways is simpler, for instance it's square. Um, what it is, is really wide. It's wider than 48, so I definitely have to put a seam in it, which is fine because I intended to anyway. What I really want to do is create panel uh, panels here, uh, very much like I have on Jordy if um, you've been watching that long. The trick is, how do I balance the panels? Um, the natural order would be exactly 18 inches, which would work quite nicely. However, uh, cutting at a 36 uh, means I waste, it's hard to say how well I'm using the wood. Anyway, let me, let me give this some thought, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be 18 inches. Okay, I have settled on 18 inches. So these two marks will be the center line of the trim. And I've cut this piece actually 35 inches. Um, which means it falls a little short, which is fine because that 13 inch piece is very valuable to me elsewhere. Okay, so um, these panels are going on for the final fit, um, but to give them just a little more um, adhesion, I'm actually going to glue them on uh, as well as tack them on uh, with some construction adhesive. Those of you who watched the tear out, um, got to experience me cursing the previous people who used construction adhesive on here. <laughs> uh, yeah, well. All right then, let's do a little test fit. Now to be fair, I haven't quite resolved what I'm doing up in here yet. Um, you may also be able to see a gaping hole where that vent went through here. Um, there's going to be a bulkhead hanging under here that will actually have reading lamps and stuff like that. And I, I think I'll be able to tidy all that up with it. Anyway, time will tell, time will tell. And we're here. Um, this is where that 13 inch piece comes in. Just what I need here. Um, this area here is, well, it's going to be a credenza here with a cabinet in it that will turn into the dresser. But right in this area is going to be the electrical panel. Um, so it's going to be a wire chase, and that's why these two wires coming out from those switches are just fine. Um, so in fact, putting the panel here is only just going to be the inside of the electrical panel, but that's just fine. Anyway, I have to pull these wires out for now, redrill them so that I can at least make that neat. So it means I have to take these switches off. Right then. Very, very, very nice. Okay. Redrill these holes and put the wires back through. Just going to do a little tidying up of the shear clamp here because, as I mentioned, this is going to be nice uh, painted 
a V joint, and uh, this would be nice if it was just a little tied up and painted because after all, this is the edge of the bed. So just a little clean up, and then I'll fill the worst of the divots with some uh, um, painter's cloth, and uh, we'll get it painted. prime the shear clamp here um, because I'm not really sure how well it's going to take paint uh, but beyond that I'm also going to paint uh, with primer down in here and the reason that is is because I'm going to leave a, a half inch or three quarter inch gap at the top um, after the last piece of ceiling for ventilation and I don't mind looking into wood even sort of old dirty wood but this orange doesn't really do much for me so as long as I'm looking in at white, I'll feel a little bit better. Okay, this is pretty mundane. While that dries, before I can start putting the ceiling paneling on there, I'm going to pull up the sole and um, varnish the backside. Now there's another thing I want to do while the sole is up, and that's to lay down a gasket uh, adhesive. It's basically weather stripping uh, on the um, sole beams or the floors, uh, just to quieten and stabilize um, the, uh, the the panels once they're in place. Sadly, I don't have enough of that gasket tape to uh, finish the other side, so I'll bring some with me next week to get that finished up. This panel isn't finalized either because it will eventually have a cutout for the uh, depth sander. Good morning, it's time to get that ceiling um, V-joint in against where the bed is going to go and I have splurged on the somewhat more expensive and quite hard to find, at least um, here, um, cedar uh, in this material which is a thin 5 16 uh, tongue and groove V-joint. Um, the cedar is much much better quality uh, because it's going to be right up against the bed and always visible I wanted to use some better stuff. So let's get this stuff cut to length. It's very simple. It's all exactly the same length going right in behind the bed and, uh, and get it tacked on. It is common uh, for this packaging to put the sweetest piece on the top and then everything after that is significantly less Oh gosh, this is hardly worth paying premium for. 
Oh well. Okay, starting at the top with the sweethearts, and we'll start groove up and a half inch spacer. And well, the whiskey plank, sort of. <laughs> See if I can get that edge. Now you'll have noticed there's a couple of butt blocks in behind this um, uh, ceiling and in the house, wherever there was a butt block, I drilled ventilation holes to guarantee better ventilation. Well, because the ceiling is only very short and it's open below and there's going to be lots of ventilation around, there's only very, very short little sections that don't have forced ventilation and I really don't want holes in the ceiling right here against where I sleep. Okay, and now to figure out the paneling for over here and the rhythm of how it's all going to work out. Happily, the uh, port side here uh, works out sort of automatically with this nice little wire chase trim that was already on the boat. So let's put that back in place and that will be very, very handy as a wire chase. Okay, so as I mentioned, there's going to be a bit of a, well, let me start a little higher. You can see this bead here. Well, this is sort of the theme of the boat. You may have noticed already. It's based on uh, a couple of beads that are on the outside of the boat. Anyway, so it wraps around, it'll wrap around, covering up the very edge of this plank here, and it'll actually continue wrapping around as part of the valence lighting. Um, below that, there'll be a little uh, bulkhead here. Uh, that will, well, for starters, it'll cover all the holes that are in the bottom of this um, plank here, but it'll also create a space to put a, um, a few little puck lights that will be reading lights uh, for the bed. So my problem is how to integrate that with the brackets. I had intended for them to spring off the bracket and start here, uh, but some of the holes are further out. Anyway, that's more than you need to deal with right now. All I need to worry about is what's happening at the back so my vertical uh, trim pieces will land in the right place. It's really not that complicated. All right, so I've decided to put a little top strip in here uh, and it'll be an inch and a half down um, and it'll become a little ledger for the little bulkhead that goes in here. And because this is exactly an inch and a half, I'll just uh, use this as a uh, marker. All right then, so as I mentioned, I'm gonna just bridge that. Actually, I think I'll use the other end, it's a little prettier. Uh, bridge this gap with a little piece of trim. And I'm gonna let these run along at the bottom uh, because I don't actually know uh, exactly where the bed is going to lie just yet so I'll just be able to trim them off easily. All right, just making sure they're parallel. There. Ooh, let me get the oil on that. We start to see some contour. Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. And one more down here. Oh, I'm going to take the slightest little trim in it. Slightest little trim. One tiny little notch later, and that fits very, very nicely. Oh, yeah. Okay, nothing left to do but get some oil on here. Good morning. Well, as next week, I'm really hoping to be able to build the actual uh, partitions for the head. I want to uh, just fill in two blocks up in here and if I keep track of what I got going on here uh, they'll basically be just two blocks that sit up like this sort of and basically continue this beam uh, in white painted and so when I build the structure below that all in mahogany that'll all just sort of seem like it was part of the original overheads. I mean the reason I want to do it now is because I want to paint it and I want it to be dry uh, when I get going running both feet on the ground as soon as I get here next week. So pretty straightforward, cut the blocks to fit, cut a small bevel on the top edge and see if it fits just perfectly 
against the uh, ceiling. And I would say that's still a bit too pointy. So we'll, uh, we'll uh, soften that just a little bit. Okay. Pocket screws may seem a bit extreme for this, but actually quite appropriate because it's going to be hidden by the structure of the top of the doorway when it's in. Okay. All right then, and it's time to paint. because plywood requires pretty severe saturation and uh, this I think is about the best way to make sure I can do that. Those of you with keen eyes may have noticed that I replaced this panel. I originally did it in two pieces and uh, I did that to economize on wood uh, but because this is going to be the head and eventually we'll have a shower I'm not sure I'll ever be able to seal this up enough that it can be waterproof, but I will certainly make an effort uh, if uh, all else fails, eventually I'll have to cover this with some sort of plastic. But in the meantime, I didn't want an extra seam down there. God, I gotta watch my head, this sticky paint overhead here. I love it, I love it, I love it! Love it! Hello there and welcome to the Travels with Jordy Beer of the Week. Coming to you this week from the bridge deck of MV Jordy in beautiful downtown Victoria, British Columbia. I believe this is my first uh, bridge deck beer of the week this season. Okay, going for the beer. Now this is a beer that was originally introduced to me by my good friend Maurizio and I think it's actually been on the beer of the week, but it is so good. From Parkside Brewery, it's Dreamboat Hazy IPA, and you can see the label is covered with boats and stuff like this. And well, I've just rediscovered this. In fact, Lady Zephyrus uh, found a couple at a local uh, liquor store, and they are such an amazing hazy. I just wanted to share it with you. Cheers. Well, <laughs> I chose to come up and do this on the bridge deck because not 15 minutes ago, it was beautifully and beautiful, sunny, warm, and no wind. And just as I got geared up to shoot, uh, a huge cloud has come in as well as quite a bit of wind. But anyway, it's still nice to be up on the bridge deck. Dreamboat. Cheers. Man, that is such a great hazing. Maybe better on a slightly warmer day, but anyway, fantastic. Okay, let's jump to the paperwork and... Um, be done with this. Uh, last week's winner of a Travels with Jody t-shirt is Panacea. Panacea, get a hold of me and you've won yourself a Travels with Jody t-shirt. Congratulations. I'd like to thank two new uh, Patreons that came aboard. Uh, so thrilled, so privileged. Uh, Jerry, oh, Jerry, uh, Camilos. Oh my gosh, Jerry, thank you very much. Um, um, I didn't notice it was you. Uh, as well as uh, Parker uh, Duberke. Duberke, I hope I pronounced that at least remotely correct. Thank you very much to both of you. Cheers. As well as new support uh, over PayPal. Uh, thank you so much to Joseph Little and um, Jan or Jan Green. Thank you ever, ever so much. Cheers. So thrilled to be starting to put Poem back together. Uh, this last week, I spent so much time just sitting on a chair in the aft cabin admiring um, it's starting to be the space that I'm dreaming and imagining it's going to be and um, being able to get um, just that mahogany, frankly, it's just a veneer but still it's the way the boat was done originally, it's quite appropriate and it looks fantastic. I'm hoping the camera um, gave you that impression. Anyway, absolutely loving it. All you need now is a word of the week. The word of the week this week has a lot to do with 
being here in downtown Victoria, as well as something I'm thinking of lately, and it's the privilege of being able to use uh, Lady Zephyrus' boat shed. My gosh, it is such a privilege. So, I think I may have used it before, but it's so apt. Um, the word of the week this week shall be privilege, privileged, anything that goes along with that. Cheers, see you next week. Can you see the figuring in that piece of wood? <laughs> it's almost like a bird's eye. Anyway, actually in retrospect, I like having it there. <laughs>